Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will take a look at this notebook and if you now think that it's just going to be another ordinary notebook review, I can tell you that's not going to be the case because that is something quite unique. And the reason why this thing is so interesting is because it doesn't power on. And you might now think like, is it broken or is like the battery empty? But that's, that's not the case. The reason why we could not switch it on is not because it's broken, it's because there is no CPU inside. And now you might think that you can just take a CPU and put it in the socket but there is no socket. So that's a bit more complicated, but also more unique. And I think way more interesting than what you might think in the first place, because originally when Intel offered to send this to me, I thought, are they just like trying to reinvent the wheel? Like the entire thing doesn't really make much sense. But when you think about it a bit longer, then this concept becomes very interesting. And for now, we will not talk about the notebook itself, like how it's built, that it has like a full aluminum chassis. It's like very sleek and doesn't really have a ton of like gaming related features because it's definitely more like business oriented. And now obviously we have to open it up to put a CPU inside. And even though this is like the emptiest notebook, I'm not even sure if you can say emptiest, but like, like there's nothing inside except for a small bag, which contains screws and a small cover where you can find thermal paste underneath. And what makes this product pretty unique is this slot right here. That's where you can insert the compute element, what we got right here. And that's also because when I heard about this the first time, as I said before, it just sounded like you have a socketed CPU simply like comparable with what you would have in like a Schenker device. But then you're getting these things right here. Like first look, size-wise, almost looks like an SSD. But this thing here basically contains everything that is required to run a computer. But again here, we will have to open it up because always the exciting things will be find under the cover. So just removing this plastic piece first. And this is the very exciting part because now we will find a lot of components that definitely differ from just the CPU and the socket. We have a Wi-Fi module, we have a switch in the center that offers to select three different BIOSes, I guess. It has a normal a lockdown and a recovery mode. Then it's just surrounded by multiple power devices like power stages, which you can see by always the connection of a power stage and an inductor. And also this could be the controller or this one of the VRM, I would call it. And here we have some flash memory. Now carefully trying to get us out of the case. And now we also see why one side was made out of aluminium and why it's flat on the other side, simply because it will transfer the heat from like the CPU, which you can see by this imprint of thermal paste, to the heatsink underneath. And this thing is what Intel calls the Intel NUC 11 compute element. It's definitely different from just a single CPU. It's somehow also kind of like a main board, but not fully, because it is still required to have this like interface on here. And in the first thought, you could think that this is just a simple PCIe interface, which it also is, but it also has different connectors in addition. So all these pins contain not only PCIe, but also USB, then the display adapter, like power delivery and everything is just on this single interface. Basically, it's a tiny mainboard with a CPU on there and also the memory. I'm not quite sure if I like that the memory is soldered on or not. For this purpose, it probably just works out fine. In this configuration, we have eight gigabyte and that's also the i5 version, which means that it's an i5 1145G7. And as you notice, it's an 11th gen, which means that it's Tiger Lake. It's not all the lake yet. Now quickly reverting back to the beginning of the video, when I talked about that, I first had a feeling that Intel is somehow trying to like reinvent the wheel. Because obviously, if you just look at this, your first thought would be, why not just use a socketed desktop CPU and just put it in there? You can always replace it, right? I also had that thought, but when I just looked at this like in more depth and analyzed like how it's built, theoretically speaking, and I'm not quite sure if Intel is really doing this, this could be upgradable over different generations. So let's say this is Tiger Lake with a four core eight thread CPU. It has eight gigabyte of memory on here, which is DDR4. And then you might want to upgrade to Alder Lake which could be featuring DDR5. So if it's just normal socketed memory, like slots, then you would not be able to fit DDR5 into a DDR4 slot. So this would straight be a mechanical limitation. Same goes for if you have a socket, you're always limited to this very specific CPU 
for this very specific socket and you might also require additional ICs like in PCH to have it running. So that's definitely different because this already requires or has all the required components on there. Then again, you're also a bit limited because the i5 version, as I said before, is Tiger Lake, 4 core 8 threads. This is only 8 gigabyte and costs 460 euro. The i7 version has basically the same CPU, it's a bit stronger, a bit, bit higher clocking, still only four cores, but this has 16 gigabyte of memory. So that could be a reason, like you're buying these notebooks as a business, you all run them standard and then at a certain point you decide that you want to upgrade them for double the memory capacity and then you're wasting another 500 euro. Yeah, that just doesn't make sense, right? Like upgrading, from my perspective, just doesn't make sense. The only thing right here would be that you have the opportunity to run different configurations. I don't know, saving space. Like you're ordering 1000 notebooks and you order, order 500 of these and 500 of these and then, I don't know. There's definitely a reason you can find to justify this. But still, that's not what I find interesting about this. It's because just from the connector and everything and the pure technology, it should be possible to have a notebook where you have all the outside components, like your display, your keyboard, all the connectors, your M.2 slot, which also contains your SSD with your OS. And at a certain point, they are launching a new CPU generation. You just buy a compute element and change it, you swap it. So that's something I definitely see as a very, very interesting feature. One negative thing we definitely have to talk about though is that you have two layers of thermal paste. Because first, the thermal paste makes contact with the aluminium chassis and then it will be transferred to the heat pipes. One additional layer of thermal paste from my experience might be like 4 to 6 degrees Celsius, so it's not like breaking anything, but it could definitely be better. The usability is very convenient, very easy though. All you have to do is you slide it into this dedicated slot and you tighten it with four screws in total. And the last thing you will have to do is add the Wi-Fi antennas. And I guess just if you're an experienced user, if you did this maybe multiple times, it might take like three to four minutes to do this. As you can see, everything is working fine now. It was just a bit weird. Then the first start, it took like two or three minutes for this thing to power on. I'm not sure if that's like the first initial boot. It takes a bit more time, but yeah, now everything is working fine. Now a quick look into windows regarding performance clocks and temperatures and everything. Obviously, just generally speaking, we're not going to do any kind of gaming bench remarks because from my perspective, it's not with any kind of dedicated graphics card. It's just the internal Tiger Lake graphics. So yeah, it's not going to have a huge 3D performance. And from my perspective, it's just a pure business notebook or just for like working or 2D applications. That's why no gaming benchmarks. You can see it's the 1185G7, so it's a bigger CPU, the i7, with four cores currently clocking at like 3.3 to 3.5 gigahertz typically. And if we look to the left in hardware info, we can see that PL2 is defined by 45 watt and PL1 with 33. While it's running PL1 with 45 at the beginning, it's instantly always hitting the like 100 degree Celsius mark. So in theory, in the BIOS, you have access to these two. You can configure them in BIOS, which would allow to tune it a little bit. Maybe you can get it to like 2200, something in this regard. You can maybe squeeze 10% more performance out of this. But I guess that's it. So yeah, just looking at 2000 points, it's a raw indication. You can probably get, as I said, maybe 2200 by tuning the PL1 and PL2 a bit from the BIOS, but generally speaking, probably won't make much sense. Now a quick conclusion regarding the NUC 11. And the problem I have is also the 11 in the name, which basically stands for the Tiger Lake generation, the 11th Intel generation. And right now we are all aware that at least in the desktop market, even the 12th generation is coming to an end. So we are close to the 13th generation. And in the notebook segment, most of the more recent devices will be equipped now with all the Lake CPUs. Which will be the question if there will be new modules with all the Lake CPUs for this. Because if that's the case, then certainly this is going to be quite interesting because then you can get this device, which apparently should be priced around 700 euro, which I think is a fair price for what you get with the display and how it's built and everything. I think that's an all right price. And then you can decide what kind of module you're putting inside. You can even get a Celeron module, which is 
two cores and four gigabyte of memory. I'm not sh quite sure why you would do that, but theoretically you could do it. And then, for example, you could use like an i5 module with eight gigabytes of memory. And when Alder Lake would come around the corner and then uh, Raptor Lake, then you could upgrade it. But I'm not sure if that's going to happen, like if there will be newer versions uh, about this. But I like the concept. I really like the concept and I wish that more manufacturers would jump on the same train and maybe co-op with Intel to have more modular notebooks available. Because also from an ecological point of view, this would absolutely make sense because you can keep your base device for several years and when you think that you're running in some sort of, I don't know, bottleneck on the CPU for example, and you could even go that far that we could go back to like MXM cards and then even upgrade the GPU, that would be quite amazing because you can keep your base and then whenever it's needed you upgrade your CPU. That's a huge wish but I don't think this is going to happen unfortunately, but we will see how it will turn out. Concept-wise, Amazing. Thumbs up from my side. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.